So I've been seeing a lot of AAA gaming is dead content, and I wanted to dissect this topic myself and see what is really going on. When I first started making this video, I'll be honest, it was pretty negative, especially after seeing the recent Silent Hill 2 remake preview and just countless flops in the AAA gaming industry. Investigating these issues can be rather infuriating and just sad. However, I think AAA gaming is finally approaching a turning point and for the better. But before we delve into why I think AAA gaming is being revived, let's discuss what went wrong and what developers and publishers are still doing that is just flat out pathetic. And what better way to do that than show some examples. <laughs> Task Force X. Alpha target is in the open. Get okay, no need to beat a dead horse. We see this example and every single one of these videos. So let's move on to some more recent examples. First off, let's talk about the hot game at the moment, Dragon Age Veilguard. As a fan of Dragon Age Origins, you might feel disappointed. It has its cringe moments, especially in the release trailer and the dialogue. So why are they doing what they're doing? If this game didn't have Dragon Age in the title, would people even play it? I don't think so. Maybe if you really enjoy action combat games, but the gameplay didn't look all that interesting either. You see, AAA studios these days just aren't satisfied with their current fan base. So what do they do? They try and build a game that appeals to everyone and in doing so you alienate both old and new fans. The game visually looks great, but the gameplay and writing is incredibly generic and boring. I'm a mage. I'll go. I'm optimistic on this game though. Hopefully the characters are compelling, the combat gets better, and the story is fantastic. But it was worth noting the obvious and just generic and lazy vibe this game gave off. After Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem, Bioware needs a W. I hope they get it with this game. I am skeptical, but optimistic. I am going to play through Dragon Age Origins now, and maybe that will influence my opinion for the better or for the worse. Um, my guess would be the latter. We have the Silent Hill 2 remake, which is being made for modern audiences. What does that even mean? I play video games almost daily. Am I the modern audience they're targeting? Why does it matter so much? Isn't the whole reason the remake in this game because of the original fans? Like I pointed out earlier, a common theme with these studios is that the current fans just simply aren't enough anymore. As someone like me, who they probably consider part of the modern audience because I've never played the original, is completely turned off by these changes, then what's the point? Why not just remake the original? <laughs> like, that's what people want to play. Instead, they make unnecessary changes that feel patronizing to the original fans. Does anyone actually care that Maria is now in a black dress and crimson jacket? Maybe a few, but definitely not the majority. The real issue is that they changed her outfit in the first place. It has nothing to do with what she is wearing and everything to do with her original look being completely replaced. And for what? Modern fucking audiences? These changes can upset fans because it sends a message that what they loved originally isn't good enough anymore. It seems like they're just scared of a few clowns and rats on Twitter. Why not just enhance what made the original game great? Like, <laughs> I just, I don't understand this approach. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Why can't we just get a remake with updated graphics, enhanced gameplay, without changing the core elements that made the game special? I just, I don't get it. Like Demon Souls, for example. It stays true to the original with upgraded graphics and gameplay tweaks that fix bugs and improve the overall experience. It's a great example of how a remake should be done. They took what worked in the original, improved the graphics, fixed the bugs, and left the core gameplay intact. Fans loved it because it felt familiar, yet fresh. Another great example, Resident Evil 4 Remake. That's just another fantastic example right there. They knew what people wanted, and they gave it to them. Here's the deal. If you're remaking a game, and you completely change the gameplay, then you are essentially not remaking the game. Sure, have your crazy cool new action combat, but allow people to play it the old way too. Final Fantasy VII did this. I've never played it, but it is my understanding that you can play the old way turn-based or the new way action combat. Just give people both options. That way you satisfy both the old and new players. Again, let me be clear. If this were a new IP, then none of this really matters. These companies can do whatever they want. It's their game. But Silent Hill is an established IP. Dragon Age is an established IP. Just make a good game and respect the original fans. 
They're the reason that you guys are even in this fucking position. Is it that hard for these executives and developers to stop trying to tell people what or how to think? Just make a good game. They spend five to seven years developing a game, and sometimes the result is flat out disappointing. Like with Suicide Squad, Skull and Bones, Redfall, and the list goes on forever. All of what I said so far is to drive home the point that a significant issue with modern AAA games is their attempt to appeal to everyone, which alienates both new and old fans, as Ron Swanson wisely said. I learned a lesson. Never half-ass two things. Whole ass one thing. This quote encapsulates the problem perfectly. Games today seem to half-ass multiple aspects instead of focusing on what truly matters. This approach is flawed and leaves many gamers unsatisfied. Another problem stemming from AAA games trying to appeal to everyone is the generic and simplified look many games have adopted. Who decides to abandon their established audience for a new one? It makes zero sense. Development costs are spiraling out of control and teams are becoming too large as we saw with Battlefield 2042. Size does not matter. That's right, everybody. You heard it here first. Size does not matter. Distributing these massive budgets across smaller teams could result in more polished, shorter games benefiting the industry overall. However, not all hope is lost, guys. Like I mentioned above, I think AAA gaming is making a turn for the better. The recent Xbox game show proves that AAA isn't dead. Gears of War, for example, knows its audience and delivers what they want. No unnecessary changes or forced characters. Capcom is another excellent example. Their games sell well because they understand their audience. Capcom, a studio that is still hiring and profiting in the video game industry, <laughs> how are they doing this and nobody else is? Well, as simple as it may seem, they ask questions to their audience and they listen to their audience. Cyberpunk 2077's redemption arc being another great example of what listening to your audience and making meaningful changes can do for your game. Capcom's super election survey gives us some insights. With over 250,000 voters, the top three things gamers look for in Capcom games are gameplay, hot characters, and compelling narratives. Interestingly, superb graphics came in at number eight. It's puzzling why AAA studios spend millions on graphical fidelity when it's not a top priority for most gamers. I know for me, when I'm looking to buy a game, like I, I tend to, I don't really care about the graphics, to be honest. I'm looking for good gameplay, good story. Like why spend millions of dollars taking a game from maybe like an eight out of 10 in graphics to a nine or a 9.5 out of 10 in graphics. Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. Gamers clearly don't care about graphics as much as developers think they do. This survey reinforces the idea that gameplay and engaging content are what truly matter. It's also fun to look at studies like this one, especially one this large. It proves the obvious reality that everyone knows to be true, but people try desperately to hide. People want to play games with attractive characters. Obviously, we play video games to escape reality. So yeah, most people want to play as badass, attractive characters. People want good gameplay. Gameplay is the cream of the crop in my opinion, and most people agree according to this chart. I wish more studios would do these kind of surveys. Not only are they fascinating to look at, but I do think it would do developers a massive service and help them get a better understanding of what we, the gamers, want. I'll leave a link to the survey in the description below for anyone that wants to see more of the questions that Capcom asked them, just more of the details within that survey. So that'll be in the description below. So how will AAA gaming be saved? Well, not by the developers, but rather by the gamers. The market is currently, in my opinion, correcting itself. Gamers are finally tired of being patronized and are starting to reject these forced ideas. The customer is always right, and the industry is slowly learning this lesson. AI, Unreal Engine 5, and other resources are becoming more accessible enabling indie developers to produce high quality games that begin competing with AAA titles. This competition is healthy and pushes the industry forward. It's pathetic that AAA companies can get away with selling incomplete games only to strong arm us into paying for microtransactions to play the complete game. Yeah, you heard me right. They sell us an incomplete game so that we have to give them more money in microtransactions so that we can play the complete version of the game. Gamers are just fed up, as seen with titles like Suicide Squad, Redfall, and Anthem. But there's a silver lining here. The Xbox 2024 showcase was one of the best we've seen, signaling a positive shift. Indie games are thriving. They offer a break from the current exhausting atmosphere of AAA titles. Games like No Rest for the Wicked, Manor Lords, just fantastic examples of indie creativity. Indie developers have the freedom to innovate, 
resulting in unique and groundbreaking games like Hades. The gaming industry needs to reevaluate itself, and I think they already are. AAA studios should focus on what made their games great, listen to fans, respect the source material, and avoid shady monetization practices. I understand that microtransactions need to be in these games because it's the only way these studios can turn a profit when spending an absurd amount of money to develop a generic ass fucking game. But in my opinion, when any business turns to the customers and blames them for their product not succeeding, then you're going out of business. It is not the consumer's fault you made a shit can of a product. Take some accountability and grow. Any games, in my opinion, are forcing these AAA studios to finally take some accountability any games flourish by focusing on creativity, quality, and respecting their audience. And I believe AAA studios are beginning to recognize this after seeing games like Power World and Helldivers 2 and their success. How could they not? Don't take this the wrong way like, I am better and I don't play AAA games. No, of course not. I play AAA games all the time and I'm sure I'll play another one here soon. I mean, I played Diablo 4. Like, <laughs> that should tell you guys enough about me. It's just that it's great to play some awesome games from these indie studios and take a break from these out of touch AAA studios. No rest for the wicked, Helldivers 2, just incredibly unique and beautiful games. So that's it for today. Let me know what indie games you're all playing right now and if you think AAA studios need to adjust their strategy going forward. Are they beginning to transition their thinking for the better or are AAA games never going to recover? I think the former, but would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for listening to my rant guys. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.